Good evening, punters, and welcome to another episode of The Tripod, where we break down every single NRL game every week from a punting perspective. Today, we'll be recapping round 14 and yet another winning week. A selective week for us, only five best bets, but still went three and two on those best bets. And to be honest, I was just thinking about it before the pod, Jacob, but like, it, th- three and two doesn't sound too impressive, but... Like, this has been a long, long time now that we've had winning rounds in a row. And I think for new followers especially, and for old ones as well, I know for myself, it's like I just expect to win best bets every single week. But it's definitely not that easy. And I mean, we're like 14 rounds into the comp now, and we've only had one losing week. Um, And that is a ridiculous clip. Like, it's not that easy to fucking do. I've actually put a video up this year that explained why it's so hard to actually win 60%. And everyone thinks, I can win, I can go 3-2. and two. And anyone can in a sample size of 5, but we are averaging better than 3-2. and two. And to put it into further perspective, let's say you were a professional punter and you were dropping 5 bets per week and you're putting 2 grand per bet, right? Which is not unreasonable for some big punters. I know no. guys that put more than that. Well, if you're winning three and losing two, the two winners and two losers more or less cancel out. You're going to lose a little bit in the juice there. And your profit's going to be a little less than two grand a weekend. Now, that's better than what most full-time jobs pay. And it's not that hard to get $2,000 bets on. So my point is, if you can win at that percentage, as we have all year, in fact, we won 60% this weekend, our win percentage overall goes down because we were at 63%. Um, That is a fantastic clip to be winning sports bet against the line. And I'd almost guarantee there's no one out there that's winning at over 60% this year on NRL bets. And we are completely free. Let's recap the round, Jacob. Let's start Thursday night. It was the Storm beating the Roosters 24 points to 6. Didn't have any best bets on the game. I did have a side bet on you, and I did lose $200. But look, the Storm were, I'd say, just too good in this one. But really, the Roosters were were pretty average. And I guess I'd been saying for a little while that like these injuries had caught up to the Roosters and they weren't the team that they were. But in saying that, you know, the Storm was still missing Cam Smith, still missing Munster. But I'll tell you what, like Jerome Hughes went to another level in this game and he completely outplayed Kieran. and you kind of thought it would be the other way around. Um, and both of those in- both of those players actually injured and I think in serious doubt for next week. Um, and Kiri's injury sounded absolutely horrific, but um, I don't know if he's going to be back anytime soon. But look, the Storm were too good. Too many errors from this Roosters side. And, you know, now that they've lost this one, they're in real danger of missing the four. They are, and this game highlighted the injuries that have been piling up. And I've been saying, actually, the Roosters have been impressive to still be winning ugly with all the key outs. And, and that it kind of made people dismiss the, the amount of guys that were out. But the forward pack matchup in this game was a mismatch. The Storm has such an awesome international level forward pack. And the Roosters, you know, missing guys. And I think I mentioned Cordner in the preview with a knee complaint, but I I should confirm I'm wrong about that. It's a concussion that he's getting through protocol to um, come back. Orbison may be broken or dislocated wrist in this one. Kiri, the injury they said he was discharged the next day from hospital, thankfully. It's only a broken rib. They've cleared him of like more internal injury from what I hear, which is good, but certainly he'll have a stint on the sideline as well. Um, Lockie Lamb got injured, although they can swap Flano straight back in there. And you're right, we need to find out the severity of this Hughes injury, probably his best game of his career, and sad to see him get hurt, um, especially with they've got a big matchup against Parramatta coming up. But I think we're just seeing what a complete team the Storm are and that, if anything, they were still under the radar up until this game. They're probably not now. They're definitely not now because the line was four and a half for that game next week against the Eels. It's now Pickham and Storm are favourites in some spots. Let's move on to... The Panthers winning nine in a row, a record for the club, beating the Warriors 18 points to 12. And this one, I would say closer than it seemed, but they only won by six points. But this was a tough game. Like, Panthers got up early. They are up 16-0 in a flash, and you kind of did think that, you know, it was one of those games that they could run away with. But, you know, once again, this is now the fourth game in a row. I said it last week. Like, the Warriors have just turned up week after week after week, and it's now become a trend, and I think it's going to continue throughout the rest of the season because when you're a cellar-dwelling team, it's so easy to give up when you're 16-0 down early against arguably the best team in the comp. But they they fought hard, and it looked like they had no right to because, honestly, in that first 20 minutes, they had zero pill. Cleary was a kicking masterclass getting repeat set after repeat set. 
And I'll tell you what was probably the difference, was that RTS try after the buzzer right at the end of the first half probably just gave the Warriors just enough belief to actually try in that second half. And look, tough conditions kept it kind of close, and it's tough to blow teams out. Um, so I'm not taking anything away from this Panthers team. team. They're still completely legit, but props to the Warriors. They just keep showing up. You made all the points I had. That was a phenomenal effort by the Warriors. Give them all the credit in the world. To be 16-0 down with everything going against them, keep fighting. They won the second half 6-2. Now, it was tough conditions, and Penrith were not at their very best, and Ivan Cleary described it as, we didn't land that knockout blow, and you're right, to concede a try off a bomb on the stroke of half time just gave the the Warriors that little bit of life, but still, it was extremely tough. Tohu Harris, Jazz Tavanga, both excellent for them. One guy who did have a great game, though, Abby Coruscant for the Panthers, and the commentators were mentioning it, like Damian Cook, no oh, yeah. certainty for the Blues number nine jersey if the Panthers keep rolling. They'll be happy with a to perform you know, less than their best and still jag a win there because they had to sweat in the last few minutes when the Warriors pulled it back to 16-10. They did indeed, and let's move on to probably the upset of the round. It was the Dragons beating the Eels 14 points to 12. Another really hard-fought game in bad conditions. And I think, you know, given these were probably the only two games of the round that had really bad, soggy conditions, and both underdogs covered, and in this case, the big underdog won. But not only that, I guess it just is an important reminder to make sure you guys are checking the weather report when you are making early best bets, because both of these totals, both of these Friday totals, which rain was forecast on the Wednesday when we did the pod, all of those totals closed like four points lower than what they were at on Wednesday. So the thing is, you make a bet on the total, let's say, if you think there's going to be rain, and worst case, there's no rain, and it's probably going to be the same total. But look, really close game in tough conditions, and just shout out once again, I mentioned it in the comments, shout outs to Zach Lomax. Last year, I remember Jacob, I think you said he was the worst fullback in the comp, and that you were getting no argument from me. Now he's honestly one of the better centers in the league, and you would like to have him on your team. And honestly, like some of these Corey Norman bombs that he's putting through on any other team would be bad. They'd be too deep. There would be no, you know, no chance for the chasers to get through. But Lomax just chases so fucking hard every time. And that try that he set up where he caught the bomb, as soon as that kick went up, I was like, that's way too deep. Um, So props to the Dragons, really good way to send Mary out, but um, tough loss for the Eels, but they'll have to regroup next week because they've got another tough one. Great result for the Panthers minor premiership, and of course, tough loss for the Eels, tough loss for me. You've got to mention, mate, um, I did win the (laughs) side bet Thursday. (laughs) So Thursday night, I was on Storm. I mean... Made you look silly there. Yeah, you Storm did. plus five and a half. They won the game by 18. Then roll into Friday. I was on the two favorites. So, you know, I knew there was a chance of bad weather. I still didn't think the Warriors could come close to the to the Panthers. And I, I expected a big game by the Eels. And I don't want to make excuses, but like um, one thing that was really apparent was heavy legs from that Sunday game, which we, you had to factor in. It was one of the reasons you liked the Dragons, that they played, a, you know, you know, they played in a swamp on on a short term against the Dragons. And Ennis even said in commentary that he played a game in a monsoon against the Storm a couple of years ago and could barely walk for three days. So that had me worried. But the Eels were full strength. The Dragons didn't have uh, Tarek Sims, Paul Vaughan. They pulled it out for Mary, led by McInnes. Huge performance by them. And not only did you win both side bets, we had a combo (laughs) of our three side bets. And I took Storm, Panthers, Eels, minus 24 and a half. And the Storm got an 18-point win over the Roosters. I only needed Penrith and Parramatta to win by a combined six. They won by a combined four over the Friday (laughs) night. So I lost that by two points. One guy I'll shout out, Gutho. When you break the NRL record for most meters in a game, you get a shout out. 369 meters. Yeah, Pretty crazy. And look, people will probably dismiss the Eels and say they're just in terrible form, but I think when you consider that was that was pretty unfavorable conditions in a lot of ways and the Dragons stepped up, I think now the Eels are under I Like, I don't want to tease ahead too far, but I'd be looking at them strongly to beat the Storm next week, and I do not give up on them as a title threat. Oh, absolutely not. Let's move on to the Sharkies beating the Titans 30 points to 18. We did like the Titans in this one, but we go 1 and 2 on best bets. Oh, sorry, one and one, one, and one. on best bets. Um, I mean, this was a rough one because we, we like the Titans. We thought they had chances to, to um, I guess, cause the outright upset in this one. But, I mean, on Wednesday when we gave out the, the bets, we didn't know Philip Sammy was going to be out. 
And then later in the week, Anthony Don gets ruled out as well. So that's cluster injuries to your wingers. And I know you can just slot Corey Thompson back into there, but even so, then you lose Jai Arrow, you lose Dale Copley during the game. So it was a rough trot for this Titans side. But honestly, it was a 50-50 game, this one. And the score does not reflect how close this game was for, ma- for the majority of the game. It's fucking 12 all. Proctor has a brain explosion, bites Sean Johnson. And from then on, it's 12 men. The Sharks go on to score three tries, I think, in that 10 minutes period where it was 13 against 12, and then it was just over. That's right. If you didn't see the game and you think, oh, well, you obviously heard the story about Proctor, but you're probably thinking, oh, the Sharks were too good anyway. The Sharks, uh, the Titans were looking good. They had the ball. They were in attack. And Proctor got sent off and they were shell-shocked. They conceded a try that set. They conceded 18 points in six minutes. And, I mean, you said the 10 minutes he was off. He was sent off. So that was the final half hour of the game. They played with 12, which you have no chance. And all I'll say about it is, if there's any players out there on a team that we've bet against that want to bite an opponent (laughs) and get sent off and cause the biggest swing you can possibly cause in the win probability. Like, you cannot hurt your team more. If there was such a thing as an own try and you picked the ball up and went back and handed the team a try, that could not hurt your team as much as what Proctor did. I'd love for that to go our way. That's all I'll say about it. But um, So the time they give given no opportunity there. Uh, we still cashed our first half bet, and I mean, uh, we lost by one and a half points. We had plus ten and a half, and they still only lost the game by twelve. And let's move on to what many thought would be uh, the rabbits rolling, but this was the game of the round for sure. It's the rabbits beating the Cowboys thirty-one points to thirty. We didn't have any best bets on the game. Thought that the rabbits would win, but just couldn't lay the seven and a half points at home. Well, away to the Cowboys when there was a chance that the Cowboys would show up. And they really did show up in this one. And it was a just an amazing sort of back and forth game. And I mean, you know, it's funny because the judging by this result, you, you, you kind of expect completely different performances the following week. Like if the Rabbits lose this game by one, let's say that's so deflating for them. But they win this game by one, they pull it out, they're still in the eight. And it's just a massive confidence boost by this Rabbitohs team. And really, it nearly didn't fucking happen because the Rabbits nearly had another brain explosion. Now, I mean, this at this point, it's got to be coaching because you cannot, you cannot not know. The coach has to drill that into you. You're down two late in the game. You're not taking the quick tap, especially when you have Adam Reynolds, arguably one of the better kickers in history on your team. It boggles my mind that they tried that Cody Walker tried to take the quick quick tap there. But huge confidence boosting win for the Rabbitohs, so looking to bet on them moving forward. But for the Cowboys, just a super deflating loss. Yeah, that's right. We didn't uh, want to go against the Rabbitohs. We, we, we were confident they'd play well in this game, but we knew there was no value on them with that amount of points. And, and um, you know, they had 12 errors, very sloppy play. They had a, a, a five-to-one penalty count against them. The, the Cowboys should have won this game. The Cowboys scored 30 points. I said the real Mo- Michael Morgan will be back this week, and he was, was actually back yeah. to his best. Drinkwater was back in, Mitch Dunn, big game. And the, it was back and forth, but the Cowboys led this game by six with five minutes to go and blew it. And, you know, a few reasons they blew it. One, two of six conversions from Kyle Felt doesn't help. He's not an accuracy kicker. No. He's never has been, but they've got no one else to kick conversions. And and the clutch by the Rabbitohs, I guess, to come back, get a try, miss the conversion, but then, as you say, get a penalty on the sideline, slot that one, and then um, off the returning the kickoff, they go 80 metres and get a clutch field goal as well. And you look at like a narrow win like that, while Manly had a narrow loss today that we'll get to, there's now four points between them on the ladder. You look how closely that those two games could have gone the other way. So it's huge for the Bunnies. Look, good response for the Cowboys because they were humiliated by the Titans to come back and play this well, but they'll be devastated letting yep. it slip. Yeah, so I'd just say like for Cowboys backers, don't think that they're necessarily, oh, they played an awesome game against the Rabbits. They're back in form. They're going to play like that next week. Let's get on to the Raiders beating the Broncos 36 points to 8. Once again, another game that we didn't have any best bets on. It kind of could go, could have gone either way. This line ticked up all the way to 18 and we were still too scared to take this Broncos team because we just didn't know if they were going to show up. Bad, cold conditions and just all the turmoil surrounding this Broncos team and they showed up. They showed up with some heart for one fucking half and the Raiders were 
horrific in the first half. So many errors from this Raiders team. It wasn't so much the Broncos being good. I mean, they showed up with some heart in the first half, but the Raiders were just really, really bad. And then the Broncos just horrific. I mean, yes, you lose Turpin, he fractures his hand, but the second half, you just show absolutely no heart whatsoever. Bad mistakes, stupid penalties when you're getting angry that you're down. You lose the second half. 30 to nil, and we're just pee hearted. And we thought this could be the case, you know? We thought that the Raiders could roll this Broncos side and they wouldn't want to be there, cold and wet conditions in Canberra. And they showed up. The, the funny thing is, though, you'd think that if they didn't want to be there, it'd be like that from the start of the game. But no, they show up there up at half time and still fold. And now you have Turpin gone. Now you have Payne Haas suspended. So, yeah, you're right what you said last week, Jacob. It's a really, really tough. To put your money on this Broncos side, but this Raiders side is is growing in confidence every week, and now like they're they're a chance they're half a chance to make the four with the Roosters loss on Thursday. Yeah, you would have thought they'd take this game ultra serious with the opportunity that was given them with the Roosters slipping up, and they have now pulled level on points. You got to remember how ruthless the Roosters were earlier in the season; their points differential is still way healthier than the Raiders. But hey, uh, if the if the Raiders hadn't started in you know half asleep in the first half or if the Broncos hadn't put in a decent effort they probably would have lost this game by 60 if you look at it that way but it's funny both scenarios that I outlaid on Wednesday actually played out I said on one hand you could get the FU Siebes performance which is he didn't coach them this week he didn't he wasn't there so they actually put in effort and they were up 8-6 at half time they were winning this game who saw that coming in fact should have been better than 8-6 but you got uh like I spoke about Kyle Felt for Tony Staggs not a goal kicker what he is an animal of a player it's not his fault they're gone so badly second half it all flipped it wasn't just 30 nil i mean it was in a, in a half it was 30 nil in a 17 minute window five tries in 17 minutes Man. and just one thing i'll say like you know there's a difference between good players and stars i feel like a good player they do their job they play in a good team they don't let you down and they execute when opportunities come their way but a star player creates opportunities out of nothing and i talk about a guy like johnny bateman what he adds to this team he, he's creating things that aren't there. There's not even an overlap or whatever. I, mean, I don't even know how he does it with his little shimmies and his ability to, to ball play, offload, break tackles, run around people. He's just got that X factor about him, Mong Strong as they call him. And um, I mean, not that they needed him to win this game, but it was his setup try to Williams that b- burst this game open. Let's move on to the Knights beating the Seagulls, 26 points to 24. We did have a number of best bets on the Seagulls in this one. We did think they could hang and possibly even win this one. And we do go 2-1 and one on our three best bets. And we were right. I mean, they were leading this game. It took a late Knights try to, to beat uh, to beat Manly there. And, Jacob, you mentioned like the confidence boost that the Rabbits get from winning a close game. This is the exact opposite for both of these teams. It is a massive confidence boost for this Knights team. And for this Seagulls side, this is the definition of a dream crusher. You have, like, you get up early. You have, like, the, one of the best tries that I've seen this Manly team put on as your first try. A Cade Cuss kick and chase when he's nearly out. And I was singing his praises at that point. I was saying, fuck, maybe it's a blessing in disguise that Dylan Walker did get injured again. But he, then he had a few mistakes down the track. And then you're up 12 nil, And then just silly errors, bad pens, just... Let the Knights right back into it. And that's the only bet that we lost on the game is the Knights to not to score three unanswered tries. And they went bang, 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 scored three in a row in the first half. But then Manly held tough. And, you know, it was just a, it was a, it was absolutely a coin flip game. And that's exactly how we saw it. We didn't think that the Seagulls should be catching that many points. Thought it would be like a kitchen sink game for them. And it really was. And, you know, I just feel for this Seagulls team, they haven't had much go their way this season. And this could be the straw that breaks the camel's back, I think. And I will say I don't think it is. I think they can still take positives from this. And I think when you consider Fanua Blake, Marty Tapau, who was likely to play when we made these bets yep. on Wednesday, but then was ruled out not me- meeting the um, you know protocol conditions of the HIA from the cheap shot last week. So you're losing your second prop, you know, and arguably Manly has the best pair of props in the comp and neither of them played in this one um and it obviously like dylan walker's out i think like there's still enough hope and i think we've talked about how they actually have a favorable final month 
that they could run the gauntlet. So I won't rule them out, but that's still an extremely tough loss. Now, you get up 12-0, one of the most incredible solo effort tries you'll ever see from Cade Cust. I mean, yeah. I was thrilled that was by that cool. try. That was awesome. He ends up hurting his knee and his ankle. They lost uh, Adam Elliott in the... No, not Adam Brad. Elliott. Uh, Brendan Elliott yes. in, the, in the first half as well. So, I mean, the injuries continue. There was a crucial drop ball by Sully on halfway on oh. first tackle when they had a repeat set. The Knights scored that set, scored three in a row, including right on half time. The Knights got a try off a bomb that was battered, I think, forward. Yes, but they it was they forward. said well, we don't have a good enough angle to overturn it, which you know that really hurts because Manly didn't deserve to go in down at half time. And then the Knights scored off another bomb second half, which also went up to the bunker as no try. You know, they're talking about it was a mid-air strip and the ball came backwards, but I thought it could have said it was lost into a Manly defender. They felt this time we've got the evidence to overturn the call. It goes in the Knights' favour again. They've gone from down 12-0 to up 20-12. to And with all the injuries to Manly and the Knights playing at home on a sunny afternoon, Ponga in a mood, they probably should have gone on to this. So it was incredible grip by Manly to fight back again, get a 24-20 lead, couple more key moments. Daly Chair Evans with 10 minutes to go. Now, he had a good game. He kicks a he kicks a bomb like a not even a contestable bomb, a bit too far. It's a seven tackle set. Yeah. And the Knights Ponga lays on the match winning try on the seventh tackle of that set, and they lose by two points. Got a shout out Paseca. We talked about the two props that were out. I mean, he was awesome in their place, and it does it does hurt them. I still will not quite rule the Seagulls out yet. That's fair, and I tell you who I would have ruled out is the Tigers if they didn't get on top of the Bulldogs in this one, but another absolute cracker, and two games that you probably didn't want to watch, or if you had to choose two that you weren't going to watch this weekend, maybe this one would have been that one, and it was a good game. The Tigers won 29 points to 28, and yeah, just a really interesting game. We kind of said, like, is we didn't want to lay the points with this Tiger side. If anything, we're probably leaning towards the Bulldogs catching the points, because we just didn't know what we were going to get with this Tigers side after, you know, giving up a lead against the Warriors, then getting trounced last week. Like, are they done with the season? And look, they came out with a point to prove. They're up 22-6 in a flash. And then it was just like bad errors, like mistakes. Just let the dogs hang around, hang around. And I mean, really, like this dog's attack is the worst attack in the comp. And to give up 28 points... Is, is a little bit embarrassing, to be fair. But, like, the Tigers should have gone on with this, and they could have gone on with this. They let them hang around. Like, it's 22-16 at half time, and then, you know, the dogs are up, and they have, like, a fucking massive chance to win this one. The game's tied, like, three minutes left. And, you know, honestly, like, if you were a Tigers fan, three minutes left, Benji tries to slot the field goal, misses, gets hit on the leg. That probably should have been a penalty. I've seen that called a penalty before. And if the Tigers ended up losing that game, God, you'd be furious. But lucky, you know, they go down the field, Brooks nails the field goal. And, you know, whether that changes my opinion completely on this Tigers team, I don't know. But I think definitely if they lost this game, I wouldn't want a bar of them. But now there's like, you know, a decent chance that they do fight for the rest of the season, at least until they're completely out of it. That's right. A team doesn't have to be most likely going to make the finals for them to have enough motivation and hope that they're alive. And they just need to know they've got a chance and they will keep turning up. And this keeps their season alive, also keeps Brisbane off the bottom of the ladder. So (laughs) Brisbane's probably thankful. One good thing that happened to them this week. But you're right. Look, we, we wanted to take the points with the dogs if we played this game, but we were worried about an angry Tigers performance off three losses. And when Garner scored his second of, of second try himself uh, in his return to this side, and they were up 22-6, you thought, well, you wouldn't want the points with the dogs. The Tigers are going to maul them here. The, the dogs fight back to 28-22 up, as you said, like Kieran Foran winding back the clock with, with show and go. Um, Cogger, probably better performance in the halves than what they've gotten out of guys like Lewis or Wakeham this season. But fall short. I mean, both teams missed. Uh, sorry, both I think both teams at least had two field goals. So the dogs missed a couple field goals themselves. It's obviously on a knife edge there, and it's it's huge, like for the Tigers to to keep their season alive, as we, as we said. And it, not saying it would have been the difference, but I mean, Foran was out with an injury for a key like ten to twelve minutes towards the back end of that game, and only came in right in the last few minutes. So whether that would have made a difference, I don't know. But the Tigers keep their season alive. 
and we keep winning bets. So, um, look, guys, thanks once again to tuning into the recap, and we'll catch you guys Wednesday night, 6 p.m., to break down round 15. Hopefully another winning week. See you then. Lego.